In a week of Russian meteors and wayward asteroids, there certainly has been plenty to see in the sky, at least if you're in the right place. Simply log on to YouTube, though, and you'll get bird's-eye videos, especially from Russia, of what was a very, very scary and terrifying and quite damaging event last week. Shawnee Morris joins us from the Midlands Astronomy Club. Shawnee, thanks for taking our call. You're welcome, Will. Good morning. Just if you haven't seen these videos, help me describe them. You see in Russia, perhaps from the dashboard of a car or from an office or whatever, uh, this bright light suddenly growing larger in the sky and then passing over with this huge pluming trail. What exactly was it? Well, NASA has confirmed since late Friday that an impact event did actually happen in the region. Uh, they revised figures to give a, an approximation of an object around 17 metres in diameter, weighing around 9 to 10,000 tonnes, impacting the atmosphere at around 40-odd thousand miles an hour. Now, this event was captured in a few fixed camera locations, but as we've seen an awful lot of videos around the web of people having seen the aftermath of the smoke, where the object has already passed through the atmosphere and at one point split in two, with two pieces then continuing on, so this smoke trail resembled like a tuning fork shape. Yeah, the smoke trail was interesting because it seemed to hang there almost in suspension, whereas you're used to seeing, say, the jet plume of an airliner passing over and it dissipates quite quickly. This dust or this trail hung around quite a, t- uh, quite a long time. That's true. The reason why it would is because it's not just uh, smoke or exhaust, if you like, left by the asteroid that was, as it was passing through, uh, or meteor as it was passing through, but uh, also debris left in the trail uh, in its wake. And given the sheer volume of debris that would have been peeled off by friction in the atmosphere at such a height, like this looked pretty massive in the camera footage, but if you're up there, like this would just swallow a jet airliner's uh, trail. So if you can think of the fact that you're looking at the jet contrail at around about two to three miles, four miles high, maybe five, this would have been happening at around about 40 to 60 miles up in the atmosphere. Wow. And you can see just how massive that is. So it gives you an idea of the energy through the atmosphere that was being left behind in the form of this uh, massive plume. Yes, I feel a little bit like Father Dougal with Ted saying this one is big and this one is far that away. Is far away, yeah. <laughs> the impact of that, wherever it struck, what would that have been equivalent to in, say, explosive terms? They're giving you an estimate of around 15 kilotons of energy. Sorry, I beg your pardon. That was compared to the Tunguska event in 1908. This one is around uh, 30 kilotons of energy, which is comparable to 30 times the power of the Hiroshima bomb. Um, The... Now, they're revising the figures all the time because of new evidence that's being found. And now we're discovering this morning that some fragments have been found as well. Uh, There was footage of a crater on fire on YouTube that was reported to be from a blast site in Russia, which is completely a fake now. It has been proven. Uh, But as we can find some more fragments on the ground, if they can actually find a parent fragment or two parent fragments, because the plume does have two pieces split from the parent body, uh, we'll be able to get a more general idea of the energy released in this plus. Yeah, but you could even see it in some of the CCTV footage. There was one video that struck me, uh, two people in an office, man and a woman, and they're having a normal, regular conversation, oblivious to what's going on outside. Next moment, the windows burst open, the door swings shut. It was obviously quite a shockwave. It was a very big shockwave. This would have, I mean, considering how far away they would have been from it too, the, the shockwave was enough to put nearly 1,100 people in hospital, 50 of whom on Saturday were still in hospital. One woman, uh, the most severest injury that was reported is a woman whose uh, spine was essentially dislocated, but she's not in any uh, grave danger. Uh, she still remains in hospital this morning with spinal injuries. But no fatalities, which is remarkable. Considering the energy that was uh, released, you know, windows have been shattered, uh, walls have been shook and cracked, this kind of uh, thing. So the fact that there's been no fatalities is remarkable, given how much energy was uh, released in this. Well, if I can move on then to asteroid 2012 DA14, I think that's the Mm -hmm. correct designation. Would the meteor in Russia have been an entirely separate strand of material, or could it have been related to the passage of this asteroid? They 
has been said that it is just coincidence, and a coincidence that would have a 1 in 100 million chance of happening. Having an event pass through our atmosphere at the same time a much bigger object was passing by within a couple of hours. But um, they do say that the completely unrelated events, but I guess you'll never know. There's nothing to say that the events that triggered this asteroid to come in our direction may not have had a piece of rock preceding it from a little impact as it bumped something else couple hundred million kilometers away so many years ago. So it's hard to tell whether or not it would be the same event. The only way you conclusively would do that is if you had a sample of each to know then if they were the same object. Incidentally, the distinction between a meteorite, a meteor, an asteroid, is it all in terms of size or are there other characteristics in which they vary? The characteristics really are. A meteorite is when an object has been uh, found on the ground. It has made impact. A meteor is when it is travelling through the air or the atmosphere. A meteoroid is that object passing through space. An asteroid is a much larger meteoroid. And then you've got planetoid, which is much bigger than an asteroid, and then you've got the planets. Ah, okay. So the, some are elements of scale, others depend on where they are. But that's exactly it, yes. The meteorite is, meteorite is the one we all like to have, but uh, obviously under safe conditions. Asteroid 2012 DA14, 50 metres across, doesn't sound very big. It doesn't. But, you know, the one we've seen over Russia was 17 metres in diameter. Uh, the, that event, by the way, was our one in 100 year event, the last one being in 1908 in Tunguska, also in Russia, uh, which was a similar size, uh, but bigger, uh, in parent body. The 50 metre wide D4, uh, D14 asteroid would have produced enough energy to have dwarfed what happened in Russia on the weekend, but would have been comparable to what happened in 1908. The reason being is that in 1908, there was a swath of around 20 to 30 uh, kilometer radius of forest was completely flattened because this event, uh, which could have been 50 to 60 meters in diameter in 1908, had exploded or caused an air burst over the ground. Had DA-14 done the same thing, that's the kind of destruction we would have seen. But given the fact that more of the Earth is populated 105 years on, it would be um, quite, quite catastrophic had it struck over a city region on somewhere on the planet. In the end, it missed us by, well, I suppose in cosmic terms, a whisker, but it was around 27,000 kilometres. Would it have even been visible to the naked eye at that sort of range? It wasn't. It was, if it had been a little bit bigger, it would have. The A14 was just shy of naked eye visibility. It was easily seen in binoculars. I, had caught, I believe I had caught a glimpse of it myself, between clouds, mind you, on Friday evening. What you would have been looking for is a tiny, tiny speck of light moving very slowly, but over a period of like, you know, 30 seconds, you would have noticed it move against the background stars. And I do believe I had a track against one of the bright stars on its path. There are people more fortunate than ourselves who were able to get long spells of visibility and therefore were able to record it uh, on video. And there's lots of those videos around. But if if it was emitting light, then I presume it was hot and therefore it was caught up in the friction of the atmosphere. So if it was that close... Why didn't it get sucked into orbit by gravity? It would have been travelling too fast, Will. The object, the A14 was travelling at around 8 kilometres per second, which is fast enough, even at its close proximity, to just whiz by Earth, but close enough that we know that Earth has actually interrupted its path in the solar system. The orbital period of this event, or this object, was around 368 days on its path in the solar system. Earth has now trimmed that down to 317 days. So it's actually been able to shave over 50 days off of its uh, known orbital period through the solar system. Mm. Incidentally, when it pays us a visit next year, will it be any closer or will it be further away? It'll be further away, around 1.5, 1.6 million kilometres. Now, that's still close. But the, it has been shown with supercomputer modelling that it won't be an impact event any time soon. But they've only been able to say with certainty up until the year 2134, because after that, the uncertainty percentage rises drastically. And we don't know, after each additional pass between now and then, how much Earth is going to perturb its orbit. Well, for the stargazers among us, or indeed for parents who want to preoccupy their children some evening by maybe sending them out with a telescope, is there anything on the cosmic calendar coming up soon that we should keep an eye out for? Well, uh, well how can I advise 
parents and, and children alike. The February is a pretty dry month in terms of meteors. We actually got really good with what happened on Friday, a double whammy, so to speak. But uh, technically, for meteor showers, February is a dry month. However, tonight, if it is clear, have a look for Jupiter. It's very, very bright in the uh, northeast. Uh, sorry.